Okay, let's take a look at question 24 in topic set 5. This question, we're given a container that's filled with some quantity of two gases, and then we get a reaction to go between those two gases, which produce third gas, water, and then the question is, what's the pressure in the tank after the reaction is complete? All right, so let's think about how to solve this problem. A couple of things to keep in mind here. So one is that the, this is a stainless steel container. It actually means that the container stays the same size before and after the reaction. So volume is constant. The other thing to note is temperature is also constant. So if volume and temperature is constant, your ideal gas equation, which is PV over NT equals R, because it's equal to constant, you can write it as two different conditions giving us the same constant. Well, if volume and temperature is constant, that means V1 is equal to V2 and T1 is equal to T2. So we end up having this equation. P1 over N1 equals P2 over N2. The pressure is proportional to the number of moles, or another way is P1 over P2 equals to N1 over N2. What this is telling you is that the mole ratio, which remember is the ratio you get from your stoichiometric coefficient, can be expressed as the pressure ratio, which is the same as the stoichiometric coefficient ratio. Your stoichiometric coefficient now corresponds to number of moles, but they also correspond to pressures. So let's write out the reaction, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, and water produced. We balance this reaction out, we get that. So you can say that two moles of H2 reacts with one mole of oxygen, producing two moles of H2O. Or you can also say two atmosphere of H2 reacts with one ATM of O2 to produce two ATM of H2O. Now the question is, what's the pressure in the tank after the reaction is complete? Well, the pressure would be pressure of our product gas, there should also be pressure of the leftover excess reactant gas. In order to be able to get the excess reactant, obviously we're going to need to first find our limiting reactant. So to get our limiting reactant, remember what we usually do is we would take the number of moles of each of the reactants and then divide it by its coefficient to figure out how many reactions we can run. Well, because the coefficient represents not only number of moles, but also pressure, we can also just take the pressure that's given for each of the gases and divide it by the coefficient. So let's do it. Let's calculate the number of reaction if we use up H2. We have two atmosphere of H2 and in the equation, we're gonna use two atmosphere H2 per reaction. So that cancels giving us one reaction. So that's if we use up all H2. Let's see what happens if we use up all oxygen. Oxygen quantity at the beginning was three atmosphere. In the equation, we were told that we need one ATM of oxygen per reaction. So that means that we're gonna get three reaction if we use up all our oxygen. Since that one gives us fewer reaction, that's our limiting reactant. Okay, is H2. Then we can figure out how much product we have, and then second to figure out the quantity of excess reactant left over. To get the pressure of H2O, what I need to do is just take my limiting reactant, which is two ATM of H2, and then multiply that by the stoichiometric ratio. But remember, stoichiometric ratio gives us the ratio of pressures, in this case, since volume and temperature are constant. The ratio is two to two, right? And that cancels up with this, so we end up getting two atmosphere H2O. That's the product. And then we have to figure out the quantity of the excess reactant that's left over. So the excess reactant is oxygen. So what we have to figure out is pressure oxygen used. So to do that again, start with the limiting reactant and then use now relationship between H2 to O2, which is one to two. So that means one atmosphere of oxygen that's used. Pressure of oxygen left over is then gonna be three atmosphere that we start with minus one atmosphere we use, which is two atmosphere. So then the answer, which is the pressure final in the tank after reaction is gonna be pressure of H2O gas plus pressure of O2 left over. And that's just gonna be two plus two giving us four ATM.